Lorelai from Lisbon, Portugal. We've been here for about a week now, and it's my first time in Europe. All right, here we go. Buggles in Europe. First time. Not Sasha's first time in Europe, but it's his first time in Portugal, and we've really had an awesome week. So we're going to have a little Portuguese wine here and tell you guys all about our thoughts on Lisbon as a place for digital nomads. Now, as Rachel said, we only have a week here, so it's not quite enough time to really get a feel for the city, but I think we've managed to do quite a bit in a week. So, saúde. Saúde. That's, I, I think guess, that's how you say it. Saúde. We're working on it. Our Spanish yeah. is way better than our Portuguese, but... The wine is good and cheap. We'll start the with that. The wine is very good, yes. Um... We just thought that we would try to give you guys an accurate representation of what a week is like in Lisbon as a digital nomad. Yeah, we're definitely not on vacation. We are working on this trip. So we got in on Tuesday and we're staying for a whole week. So on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, we had somewhat busy days mm -hmm. with teaching and calls and writing and all our usual stuff. So we were working a couple hours a day uh, there during the week. But what did we get up to in our spare time? Oh, we did all kinds of sightseeing. We are actually staying inside the castle walls, as you can tell here. There's a castle up on the hill here, and yeah, our Airbnb is actually within the, like the outer wall of the castle. We're inside the fort. Um, and so here, we're gonna give you a little tour of the Airbnb, and we'll drop a link in the comments. So enjoy. All right, time to check in. We're staying like two minutes away from the key. castle. Yeah. Nice little neighborhood. I'll give you a tour in a second. All right. Welcome to our Nomad Pad Lisbon edition. Um, we've got this cute little place here that's inside of the castle in Lisbon, and it's tiny, but it's cute. So I'm going to show you around. Um, there's the bedroom. I haven't even really looked at it yet. With the light. Yep. Looks good. Mm-hmm. This is the living room area. We got a table and a TV. And, and some Portuguese ginger to sample. Real fort wall. <laughs> some nice pictures on the other side too. Yeah. Actually all kinds of nice pictures here. And then we've got the kitchen. And the bathroom. A little washing machine. Well, you're Some stoked great for that. Hospitality with a bottle of red. Nice. All right. Rachel's this is where we live now. First time in Europe. Yeah. All right. Welcome to the Lisbon spot. Our host was nice enough to uh, leave us some ginger, and it's a long trip, so. I think we're going to give it a whirl. <laughs> Just a little taste. How does it smell? I honestly don't know much about this stuff. I just saw Rick Steves drinking it on his uh, episode of Rick Steves Europe here in Lisbon. And he's never steered us wrong in the past. And I guess that's what you do here. You drink ginger. So cheers. cheers. Euro trip starts now. It's a little sweet. It's interesting. I don't think it's very strong. No. We'll get back to you. Not bad. It's good. Cheers. So, even though we have been working and uh, hanging out here in the Airbnb, we've still been able to see quite a lot of stuff. Buggles in Europe. Yay! Look at that gate. See it. Such a cool gate. Not the nicest weather, huh? No, whatever. Yeah, we actually did two different walking tours. So we loaded up the Rick Steves uh, audio tour. It's a podcast you can just download. And we did that walking tour one evening after we finished work on our own, mm -hmm. which was nice. We got some background of the history of the city and saw some of the most famous sites. Uh, dropped into a few places to get a bite to eat and a drink here and there and really enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. Stopping in for a little snack here. Stuff. 
Got a nice lay of the land with it. And then the next day we joined the chill out free walking mm -hmm. tour where we did a walking tour of Lisbon with an actual tour guide who was giving us the history and events of things that happened and the earthquake, which is a really important thing to know mm -hmm. about if you're going to come to Lisbon because it kind of set the tone for modern day technology and architecture. Spoiler alert. I think it was 1755 yes. that much of the city was destroyed by November an earthquake. November 1st, 1755, because it was All Saints Day. So we highly recommend that walking tour. We've done mm -hmm. lots of these free walking tours, and this one was excellent, great guide, uh, really informative tour. We really enjoyed it and felt like we got a lot out of it. Um, of course, with these free tours, you are expected to give a tip for your guide. They work really hard, and it's their job. So Please tip your guide. If you're doing a free walking tour, don't be a cheap ass, and that's coming from a cheap ass. <laughs> um, so highly recommend the chill out tour. Uh, we also, of course, went over to the castle because it's literally right here, right next to the Airbnb. And one of the funny thing is it's full of peacocks. Yeah, lots of peacocks live up at the castle. So don't be surprised if you see several roaming around the neighborhood. Or if you hear them. Right. Uh, they're quite noisy. Strut your stuff. Strut your stuff. And the neighborhood, by the way, where we're staying, where the castle is, is called Alfama. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the oldest, most traditional uh, neighborhoods in Lisbon. And What do you think about Alfama, Rachel? It's pretty awesome. It's way up on a hill, but you get great views as a result. Yeah. We absolutely love it here. And it's up on a hill, so you can get really incredible views of the city mm -hmm. from multiple sides of the hill. Yeah, in addition to the castle, uh, there are several viewpoints around the neighborhood, so we've checked out several of them uh, in our week here, and you always find people uh, playing guitar, at these spots and there's little kiosks where you can grab a beer, a coffee, a glass of wine, uh, some small snacks and pastries and I love that vibe about mm -hmm. this city and I guess that's a thing across Europe that we don't have so much in the US. <laughs> Some nice public outdoor spaces where you can yeah grab something to eat grab a drink sit uh, outside enjoy the sounds of some street musicians and enjoy some awesome views including a uh, sunset view from the top of the hill here mm -hmm. it's a really good place to watch sunset so we were up here yesterday on thursday and there was probably like what do you think 30 a quarter of the people maybe yeah yeah it's at least 100 probably more <laughs> what a difference a day makes Friday in Lisbon, huh? Yeah? It's a freaking weekend. You ready? Maybe I'm about to have me some fun. <laughs> um, and let's see, what else? Um, we took a day trip out to Sintra, which is a part of Greater Lisbon, but further outside the city center. So you have to first take a train for about 40 minutes and then a bus. But then once you're in the town of Sintra, it's amazing. It really <laughs> is like a fairy tale land full of castles and palaces. I said it felt like being in a Disney movie. Yeah, <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I see where they got their inspiration yeah. for the princess movies. Super colorful, just gorgeous castles and palaces up on the hill there, beautiful views. You can see the ocean from up there. Um, that was really cool. We spent an entire afternoon out there on a Saturday. It was a beautiful day. We really lucked out weather-wise and Highly recommend Sintra as a day trip out of Lisbon. It's well worth it. Uh, you could even stay a night and do more sightseeing if you want. There are some little hotels out there. Would you go back? Absolutely. Yeah, we would definitely go back. There's several different sites to see, so be sure to add that to your itinerary. I'm still sipping. You get to when you're done. Mm. <laughs> We ate 
the famous custard tarts at Pesteche de Belém, which is probably the mm -hmm. most famous place to eat those egg tarts. Yeah, it's a very popular place, so there's always a line there. Uh, we decided to go on a very rainy Sunday. We figured there wouldn't be a huge line on a rainy day, and we were right. We only waited about 15 minutes. Yeah, it really didn't take that long. The place is huge. And we ate all the things. <laughs> <laughs> All the things. In addition to the custard, egg tarts, whatever you want to call them, the uh, pasteche de Belém there. We also had some uh, codfish cakes, which are also a famous dish here in Lisbon. It's called bacalao. Yep. <laughs> Good stuff. Mm -hmm. How is it? That's good. port wine. There it is. Yeah. We got some codfish croquettes here at Solar Dos Vicos. Rachel's loving it. <laughs> so good. Look at those. Some beef on us, con queijo, ah, okay. pork sandwiches with cheese. We got some mustard and some spicy oil. Mm -hmm. um, we had some little shrimp turnovers. We had one with duck and spinach. And look at that! A little ginger to finish your meal. Yeah. yeah. How excited are you for this? I am so super excited. Well, it's a tea day. So this place has the same name of the noodle shop that I used to eat at like every day my first year of Beijing. Oh my gosh, tastes like home. Manjo la ma la mian. Manjo old horse pulled noodles. Starting with some lots of jiting, some spicy chicken, but you know, we went with the Portuguese beer instead. Do not miss the Chinese beer at all. The food on the other hand. How is it? Oh my gosh. Authentic AF? I might cry. <laughs> Yes. But aside from all of the sightseeing and the eating, we definitely went out to find some local craft beers. Oh yeah, you know, we're always looking for the craft beer. I mean, the wine's good. Once oh yeah, again, wine's cheers. good, but this wine's we good. like beer. All right, last night in Lisbon, might as well try a local IPA with a view, yeah? yeah. We love beer, and actually they're making some pretty awesome beer here in Lisbon. We found a couple different places, not necessarily breweries, but uh, craft beer bars where you can sample different beers from Lisbon and from around Portugal. Uh, we had some good snacks at these places too. Met up with some other nomad friends. Uh, did a little bit of bar hopping with them. It's definitely a fun city to go out in, right? Mm -hmm. We really liked the medieval bar, mm -hmm. so definitely check that place out. And all right, so checked out the Time Out Market. It's all right. It's pretty cool. It's a little restaurant, so I guess it's a lot of Checked out the uh, Pink Street. Not so much our vibe. Not our vibe. Looks like people are having fun there, but this place looks like more like uh, what we're into. Yeah. This is the medieval tavern. So, Saud, I think that's how you say cheers in Portuguese. Friday night in Lisbon. They got a spicy tuna. Spicy tuna tiborona. Tiborona. I guess it's like Portuguese bruschetta, yeah? Good? And the um, canil? Uh, yes, yeah, cervecheria canil, I yeah. think. And um, another one was called Sputnik. So we enjoyed all of those places, had some good IPAs. Uh, I think you had a porter, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so definitely f a fun city to go out, just uh, wandering around. I mean, the architecture is is pretty stunning. There's the uh, very colorful tiles all over Lisbon, which oh, is yeah. kind of a trademark of the city. Rachel's just been stopping and gawking at them. <laughs> Even just going for a walk in Lisbon is gonna lead you down some incredible alleyways where you'll find really fun surprises. <music>
gateira E o Tejo é seu namorado Não cansa Eu Não perdi a esperança De ver Chorar por mim city to just kind of get lost in and just admire the you know the architecture along the way and just the the feel of the different neighborhoods it's the city of seven hills so you will find yourself going up and down the hills which if your legs get tired thankfully there are a lot of options for getting around Lisbon let's touch on those real quick yep there's a subway there's also lots of different buses mm -hmm. there is of course the, tr the tram which has become really popular for tourists I mean, it's admittedly really cool, but yeah. you also have to remember that's how locals commute. So just be mindful of that. Yeah, the tram number 28 that comes up the hill here to the castle, it's kind of become like a tourist attraction because uh, it gets you up to the castle, it gets you up the hill. It goes and... past some amazing viewpoints. Yeah, uh, but it can get really crowded. Um, so, you know, I don't know, if you're in the city, maybe try to avoid taking those kinds of things like in the morning and in the afternoon people are trying to go to and come home from work. Um, you know, we, we've taken the tram, not the one up the hill, but the one to Belém. We've taken the bus. We've taken the metro. Uh, the only thing we haven't done is really take cabs or tuk-tuks. We've been trying to uh, have more money for food and drink and spend less on getting around. But you do have a ton of options here. Public transportation is great. If you're going to stay in Lisbon for a week like we did, don't make the same mistake we did at the airport. Don't just get a one-way ride card because you cannot recharge that. Right. It's called a zippy or a zappy. One of those Z words, you get that one and then you can just add money to it. I'd say put 20 euro on it mm -hmm. when you get to the city and that way you can just tap that for the metro, for the bus, for the tram, for anything and it'll just deduct the money off the card. So we ended up having to buy a ticket here, buy a ticket there and the lines can be really long, especially for the train to Sintra. So I would say, isn't it worth it to buy these kind of things in advance? Yes. Yeah, they also have like a Lis Lisboa card where you get unlimited public transportation and it includes entrance to a bunch of the sites so if you're going to go you know full throttle with the sightseeing it might be worth it to buy that card mm -hmm. if you're a nomad like us and you're working four or five hours a day and you might see one attraction a day it's probably not worth it right no you might just want to you know buy the tickets as you go but you can buy most of them online and we did that for Sintra and it saved us a lot of time because that line was super long so the internet is your friend. Get on the internet, buy your tickets for these things in advance. You can put it on your phone. Um, oh, and you can pay for like everything with your phone or I use my Apple Watch here. We're still a little bit lagging behind the times, I think, in the US, <laughs> right? Yeah, they're definitely in the future here in terms of contactless payments. Yeah, it's super convenient to go out and pay for stuff. And I don't know, do you have any other thoughts to share on your first visit to Lisbon? Anything that stood out to you? Well, I was just gonna say, speaking of cards, you can also get the Lisboa card, which you can get it for 24 hours or 48 hours or 72 mm. hours, and it'll get you discounted entrances into a lot of the places that you want to see. And, and a lot of them aren't included, to right. be fair. You can check a lot like the monastery in Belém, the tower, which was under construction during our visit, and it was raining that day, so we missed the tower. Um, it but, didn't really make sense for us to get one of those cards because of our work constraints, but if you are just coming you know, for a vacation mm -hmm. uh, or a city break where you're not working, it's probably worth it to get it. Yeah, especially if you're here when the weather's really nice. Uh, actually, even if it's not nice because there's a lot of museums included in that. So I think you can get your money's worth regardless of how the weather is. Um, there's plenty of uh, places that are included in that. And like I said, it includes unlimited rides on the public transportation. So you can zip from place to place, just swipe your card and it's super convenient. We will add something uh, for, you know, digital nomads. If you're curious, there are a ton of cafes here and several co-working spaces. We did not go that route this time because we're staying up on a hill. Did not want to lug our bags with our computers up and down the hill every day. We chose to just book an Airbnb that had workspace and fast internet. We were able to work from our Airbnb during the day and then just go out and enjoy the rest of the day without lugging our stuff around. But, you know, if you're coming here for a week or even a month or longer and you're the kind of person who likes to work in a cafe or co-working space, 
you have several options. It's definitely a very popular city for digital nomads, right? For sure. And Rachel was saying that there's some kind of nomad visa now, or... Well, it's not specifically called a nomad visa, but they have two long-term visas now that are good for digital nomads because it allows you to stay past that 90-day mark for that they require in the Schengen zone for Americans mm -hmm. and people from New Zealand and Australia. Yeah. Yeah. So that's something we're actually going to look into. We were looking into it today. After six days here, we're both like, okay, can we stay longer? Can we come back? Uh, it's definitely got a great vibe about it, and we would love to come back and spend at least a month, preferably several here. It's really safe, really peaceful. The people are super mm -hmm. friendly and helpful, and the food is amazing. The views are incredible. Um, fun there's... city to party in, like we said. Yep, fun city to party in, and I don't have any other European cities to compare it to, <laughs> but I did have an amazing first time here. We'll ask Rachel in a couple of weeks because we'll also be spending a week in Rome and a week in Barcelona and visiting some other places for three or four nights each. So we'll see at the end of the trip which one is her favorite. Um, but yeah, we love it here. Cheers to uh, Lisbon. We highly recommend it. Yes. We've had a great time and we look forward to visiting again in the future. And hopefully staying for longer. Yes. So thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, if yeah. you have any tips for Lisbon or any questions, as always, please leave a comment let us know. Definitely make sure you subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss another video. Cheers to you guys. Cheers. We'll see you in the next one.